Newborn screening needs to be done 24 hours after the baby's born so that we're sure that we're getting the baby's circulation and not some things that are left over from mom. We do the newborn screening, it's sent to one of the laboratories. The G6PD test is now done on a DNA based basis. They look at five common mutations that are seen in the G6PD gene and when they report out an abnormal result they're going to tell us whether they see one or sometimes two different changes in the G6PD gene. So when we see the child back in clinic, which is usually within a few days of when we get notification of those results, one of the first things we want to look at, which would be a trigger that they may be already having some complications because of G6PD, would be the jaundice or the yellowing of the skin. So if they do come in and they are jaundiced, then there's a little bit more concern that that may be related to their condition. The important thing to know is people can go their whole lives and never have any kind of effects, adverse effects from having G6PD. Fauvism, a lesser known name for a lesser known disorder known to professionals and those who are afflicted as glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency. This genetic disorder, while not limited to one race, most commonly affects African American males, up to 10% of them, and people of Mediterranean descent. The reason for these preferences are, is unknown. But, like a more common genetic disorder, sickle cell anemia, G6PD deficiency, as we professionals call it, helps a person resist an infection of malaria. This reason has been cited as why African Americans are more commonly affected, where the G6PD gene itself is located explains why males are more commonly affected. Mostly males are affected because of the pattern of inheritance, which you may have learned in class is X-linked inheritance, where the gene is on the X chromosome. Boys are more likely to be affected because they have only one X and one Y. A girl has two X chromosomes. If she has the abnormal gene on one of her X chromosomes, usually the other one is strong enough that it compensates for the effects of the G6PD gene. The X chromosome carries important information crucial to the function and survival of the person in question. It is the mutation of this chromosome, more specifically the G6PD enzyme, that can cause the disorder known as Fauvism. Hmm, I've seemed to mix up our glasses, sir. Oh, I'm very sorry, sir. There you are. Ah, it's quite all right. Ah, much better. Yes. There are various symptoms that are attributed to G6PD deficiency. Needle nodal jaundice or yellowing of the skin <laughs> is among the many. In a large spleen, abdominal or back pain, gallbladder stones, a low number of red blood cells, and dark Pepsi or tea colored urine are signs of disorder as well. Interesting. <laughs> There are as many triggers as there are symptoms. A trigger is something that causes the symptoms to start occurring or make the G6PD deficiency begin to act up. Triggers include red, red blood cell stress from infections or severe trauma, certain medications that include but are not limited to ibuprofen, Motrin, Aleve, some antibiotics and some cancer medications, Chinese herbal medicines, mothballs, and fava beans, which give our disorder the name favism. Fava beans are also known as broad beans, bell beans, English dwarf beans, fever beans, haba beans, horse beans, pigeon beans, silkworm beans, or tick beans.
Five different classes of uh, G6PD variants, and that's something people decided a long time ago how to classify them based on enzyme activity and as well as prevalence in certain populations. So there is a type of G6PD, for instance, that has greater than 150% of normal activity, which is the total opposite of what you would think. Normally, with enzyme problems, you think of deficiencies, but there's a type where it can be triggered by an excess of enzyme activity, but it's extremely rare. It's not one of the ones you would see commonly in the African-American population. There are some that, uh, there's one particular type called type 3 that's the one that's most common in African-American individuals, and that's one that occurs about 10% of the time. So most of the patients that we see that have been ascertained through newborn screening are those that have type 3. Occasionally we do pick up some people with less than 10% of normal, which would be type 2, and type 1 is essentially uh, almost normal enzyme activity, but they may have a gene change, and therefore they can have um, uh, what we call non-sphericidic anemia but it is uncommon uh, to occur in, it, it's uncommon, it really occurs in all populations, so it's not specific to Mediterranean ancestry or African American ancestry. So it's really the production and the amount of enzyme that's going to determine um, to what degree the person is affected. Is there a treatment for the G6PD deficiency? There's not so much a treatment as, as uh, in terms of other than avoidance. Um, if you're anemic, they do things to um, help you with improving the anemia. Um, if it got to the point where you actually had uh, a spleen enlargement and it got bad enough, maybe a splenectomy, but that's generally not recommended unless it's a very severe case. There is no cure for the G6PD deficiency, but there are ways of treatment. Prompt recognition and treatment of the infections is possibly the best treatment that you can have. You can avoid certain medications like the ones I listed earlier, ibuprofen, Aleve, and things such as that. Avoid mothballs, especially the ingestion of mothballs, tonic water, and Chinese herbal medicines. Avoid fava beans. Iron supplements sometimes help, and so take those as needed. Antioxidants like vitamin C or E are not yet proven to be helpful, although some people believe them to be. Spleenectomy, that is, taking out your spleen, is not advised because the spleen is only enlarged during a hemolytic event and will return to its usual size. Done. <laughs> we, we gotta watch this. Are you rolling? I'm rolling right now. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Interesting. Couple. Oh, I understand. Not heads. <laughs>